Hey guys, what's up? This is your host Gaurav and welcome to 100 GB. Well, before we begin, let's make some tea. Wow, just the way I like it. Not coffee this time. <laughs> so today in this video, I'm gonna be talking about uh, is it worth transferring from India to the US as a software engineer? So first, why this video? So there are two reasons for it. First one is that I have been getting a lot of questions about my transfer, what, when, how, etc. And the second reason is that uh, lately I have come across a lot of uh, YouTube videos which talk about like the reality of two crore packages which are offered to IIT graduates. One of those videos is actually made by Nishant. Uh, the link is in the description. You can go check it out. The video is awesome. So this video will kind of build on top of that and you can think of it like an extension uh, on that one. How about finishing my tea first? Let's come to the first aspect, which is the salary which is one of the most important motivations for coming to the US. Um, actually, let's see the salaries on levels.fyi. Let's go to the Google salaries, then L3, which is the fresher level, and then San Francisco Bay Area. So the total compensation is 197,000 US dollars. Uh, okay, actually, let's just consider the pay salary. Uh, why, I'll tell you soon. So the pay salary is 139,000 US dollars. And for an L3 in India, uh, this average is around 29,000 US dollars, which is uh, 21 lakhs Indian rupees. Well, okay, the difference is 4X. <laughs> and by the way, we, don't, we really don't know if these figures are real. Uh, and this website actually publishes the, uh, okay, I don't know. So now, why I, why I ask you to forget the, uh, the stock is because when you transfer, uh, you actually don't get any transfer stocks or anything of that kind. You do still get the refresher stocks, which happens every year, but you won't get any stocks on your transfer. So next, taxes. In the US, uh, the central government imposes 28% of uh, income tax. And interestingly, all the states have their own taxes as well. Now, you might be wondering that isn't it better to move to a state with no tax or the least amount of taxes? Well, there is a catch that uh, your salary is adjusted in accordance uh, with the state you are in. So right now I'm in California, my salary is X. And then let's say I move to Washington or some other state, my salary won't remain X, it will be less than X. Uh, even on the same role, same company. So counting everything, here in California, the income tax comes uh, about to be 40%, whereas in India, it is 30%. And in India, the slabs are generally bigger, which is not the case here in the US. So the takeaway salary in the US for this much income, it becomes uh, 3680, which is kind of the, uh, the bi-weekly income into two, which is 7,360 USD a month. Whereas in India, for this income, it is 140,000 Indian rupees, which is roughly 1,800 $1, US dollars a month. So yeah, it is 4X here in the US. So next is cost of living. Okay, let's start with the purchasing power parity. So according to a World Bank report on purchasing power parity, let's call it PPP, uh, in 2019, uh, if we see India and US, it was 4.5x, which means that if you're buying anything in, the, uh, in, the, in India, it'll cost around 4.5x uh, in the US, um, which is actually not entirely true, folks. So all the electronics, kitchen gadgets, automobiles, uh, furniture, it's actually cheaper here in the US. Uh, and by cheaper, I mean without considering PPP. So for example, Xbox Series S, it, it costs around 24,000 Indian rupees here in the US. Whereas in India, it, it retails for around 34,000 Indian rupees. So what is all this fuss about? That is, 
food, real estate and insurance. So here in the Bay Area, an Indian meal will cost you, uh, on an average, it will cost you around $10. It can go up till 2025 in the downtown area and it can come down to $5. Uh, but yeah, on an average, it's like $10 per person. Whereas if you're cooking at home, uh, the meal will cost around 3 to $4 per person. So real estate, uh, a standard one bedroom will cost around 2500 US dollars uh, a month here in the Bay Area. So all in all, a person will end up paying around 1300 or 1400 US dollars a month for a room, uh, including everything. So now you have a rough idea of all of this and we will conclude all of this in the next section. Hey, let's take a quick pause here. So if you've watched this video this far, which probably means that you're liking this content, I request you to please go ahead and subscribe right away. And if you have subscribed, at least hit the like button. It really helps. Just do it, do it, do it. Okay, now that you have done it, let's go to the next section, which is savings. So savings, it is another important motivation for moving to the US. Uh, actually, let's let's do some math. So the, the total US takeaway salary for a month was 7,300 US dollars. Rent will eat your 1,500 US dollars. Uh, food will eat your roughly $360 a month, uh, assuming $4 per meal, which means that you're cooking in home. Uh, okay, let's make it 500 US dollars. Decent medical insurance will cost around 240 US dollars. Then let's come to the car. A uh, car will generally cost you around 800 US dollars a month. Well, so this includes everything either if it's a lease or, okay, a lease may come to four, maybe 400 or 500 as well, depending on the car you have opted for, but roughly it's around 800, including insurance and everything. So the total 7,300 USD uh, minus 1,500 minus 500 minus 240 minus 800, it comes out to be 4,260 US dollars, which is roughly, three lakhs Indian rupees, which is still more than double of uh, the income you would be getting in India. And this is the actual picture, folks. But mind you, this is only for one person. Now, if you're a couple and if only uh, one is earning, then things might be different for you. So next is psychological aspect and maybe the physiological aspect as well. So the first point here is that you will be leaving your comfort zone, which means that uh, you will be spending a lot of your time in cooking, doing the dishes, uh, cleaning, shopping. And actually, trust me on this, that the life right now in India is very comfortable, uh, especially in the big cities and especially with the facilities that the big cities have to offer. Uh, things like uh, Big Basket Daily, Milk Basket, and a lot of other uh, similar things. Well, you have some kind of uh, similar facilities in the US as well, but I won't say those are as good as you get in, the, in India. So second point, you will be moving away from your family. Well, it's it's fine if you are already like living away from your family, your parents are okay, they are already in the habit of not seeing you for a while. But if you are staying with your family, it will be challenging. Now, if you don't have any friends over here or any colleagues, any support system, just don't move. It is very difficult to stay in a country where you don't have anybody to talk to. And actually, so while you're living here, you cannot go back to India whenever you feel like. You have to plan your travel in advance, which is a major drawback, I'd say. Third point here is that in the US, you have better infrastructure, better healthcare, almost zero corruption better career opportunities. So why career opportunities? It is because most of the MNCs are headquartered in the US. And so for example, for me, I it, it was a distant dream for me to be part of the Android team, which was not possible while I was in India because Android team doesn't have their presence in India. And the last point is your spouse. So if you're moving here and your spouse is moving as a dependent, they cannot work here unless and until they get the work permit. In order for them to get the work permit, it'll take around seven, eight months. And these days it's taking what north of 10 months, I guess. Um, so, but for L1 visas, there is some relaxation, but yeah, that is a separate discussion altogether. So conclusion, is it worth moving? I'd say uh, you should ask yourself a question. Do you want to permanently settle away from India? If yes, then I think it's no brainer. Just find a way, either come here for studies 
or join a multinational corporation and transfer take an internal transfer from there and just keep on keep on living your life here in the us and if the answer is no just think is it worth giving up your life and comfort in the india just to save a little bit more it's for you to decide and yeah let's end the video on this note uh happy new year to everyone uh stay safe and stay healthy it's a freaking jungle out there bye bye see you in the next one